Now, what is the fifth step that we have? The fifth step that we have is to authorize the dev org. I'm doing it with the dev org. In case if you want to do the development in your scratch org, then is a different process where you need to authorize the dev hub org first. Once you have authorized the dev hub org, then you can create your scratch org where you can do the same process that we are doing in our dev org. I'm just going with the dev org because I wanted to proceed with the dev org that I have, which is nothing but my developer edition org that I have for this demo purpose. Feel free to take this approach of authorizing your dev hub org and then creating a scratch org and you can follow along the same steps that I'm doing in my org as well. Let's authorize our dev org from our VS code. For that, I'm going back to my VS code here. Now, what is the thing that we need to know? The step number five is to connect the VS code that I have, so which is in my local, to the Salesforce org, right, which is in the cloud model. Now, if you see here, I'm connecting local VS code with the Salesforce org. Now, as a part of this connection in Salesforce org, if you see, we have classes, we have Apex classes, we have triggers, we have objects, we have record types, we have page layouts, we have flexi pages, whatnot. So many metadata that is there. If you have these means of metadata, if there is no structure of organizing this metadata in our local, for time being, let's assume that the connection is already been established between the VS code and the Salesforce. We do not have a proper structure in terms of saving this components metadata that we have in the Salesforce org in our local. So what would happen? I would be placing these files in multiple locations, which is not properly organized. What would happen in case if I want to search for an Apex class that is already there in my local? It takes longer time for me to reach out to this class and identify the Apex class that I have in my local, right? So that is why what we are doing here is instead of directly going ahead and connecting with the Salesforce or first we are creating a project structure. What is this project structure? This project structure is nothing but a template that is given by Salesforce where it says that under this folder, you can find your Apex classes. So there is a folder with name classes where you can find all your classes there and you would have another folder let's say you have apex triggers under that folders you will find all your apex triggers in order for us to categorize things we have a folder structure that is given as a template to us before we go ahead and connect to our salesforce or there is an intermediate step that we need to proceed which is nothing but creating a project in our local so that way we have an option to save the changes that we are retrieving from our Salesforce or in our local in a proper format or in a specific order. Now, how do I proceed with that? Click on file and then you can access this command palette. In case you are using Mac, use command shift P as a shortcut. In case if you are Windows, in case if you are using Windows like me, feel free to go out with the shortcut control shift P. As soon as I click on that, this is how the command palette would open up. So you can start typing SFDX. As soon as I entered SFDX, there are a couple of options that are given to us. The one that we need to use here is create project with manifest. This is the command that we need to use. So what it does is it would basically take the Salesforce project template and would it would create a project structure for us. So what I'll do, I'll go ahead and click on this option here. So as soon as I click on that, there is an option that has been given to us, which says standard project template, which is set to default. So we can go ahead with this default template, which basically tells the Salesforce folder structure that we, we are expecting here. So I'll go ahead and click on this option here. As soon as I click on that, it is asking more for one more information, which is nothing but enter project name. So it is basically saying that what do you want to name the project structure that you are creating in your local? It is asking, what is the name of your project folder that you want to give to the folder structure that I'm creating in your local system? So I'll go ahead and say, set up demo folder, right? So this, this would be my folder structure name. 
right you can come up with anything i'm just naming it as setup demo folder just for my reference i hit on enter here as soon as i hit enter here it is asking me where do you want to save this folder structure i have a folder structure that is already there in the system that is created for this demo which is lwc under this lwc I have this lwc project folder i am asking the system to create a folder structure there itself so i'll click on create project as soon as i do that if you see the screen got changed where i could see couple of options that are coming up under this folder structure now if you remember i was talking about something related to the project structure that we would be seeing once we execute that command where i have a organized placement of folders so that way anything that i wanted to search or use would be easier to access so if you ask me to show you that process if you open this force app under the force app you have a main folder under the main folder you have a default path you can see that same folder structure in your local also sam so i'm opening that path here so as soon as i open that path i can see classes as a folder i can see aura as a folder for time being we do not have anything here because we have just not connected our vs code to our salesforce org so it's just a project structure which has folders with the categorized names or a specific names for a specific need right so this is what you can see now if you ask me to show this folder structure that got created in my local i'll i'll just switch the screen here so this is the setup demo folder if i open this one i could see the same folder structure that i was showing you earlier if i go into the force app i have a main folder under the main folder i have default folder inside the default folder i have a class folder similarly i have an aura folder where i will be using my aura component similarly i have an lwc folder that is there as well right you can have this folder structures automatically created this is your step number 5 part a the actual main step that we are looking at is to authorize an org authorize a dev org so that way vs code connects to the salesforce org that i have right as a part of that we have taken a small intermediate step where i have created a project structure that can hold the components or the metadata that comes from my salesforce org in a second from now you will be able to understand why am i doing this why am i talking about the project structure you will be able to relate all this point Uh, once we connect our vs code with our salesforce org now i am back to my vs code where we can initiate the process of connecting it to the salesforce org right now if you see the bottom left corner it says no default org set so that is one point that i wanted to show you before we connecting to a salesforce org now again anything that you wanted to initiate a command or anything you can use control shift p to initiate the command palette or you can click on file and use this command palette from now onwards i'll be using this command shortcut which is nothing but the command shift p for pulling up this palette feel free to do the same thing because we might be using this option quite frequently so feel free to remember that shortcut which is nothing but control shift p if you are using windows and command shift p if you are using mac if you see here the options that we got here as soon as i open this one a few options which are related to sftx so what is the option that i wanted to use i wanted to use the option where i want to connect this vs code to a salesforce or so what you do is type in sftx put a colon and say authorize an org authorize org would basically help us connect to an org authorize org would help us connect to a salesforce org whereas authorized dev hub org would help us connect to a dev hub org in case if you have already known what exactly is a dev hub org it this org is a baseline where we can create a scratch org right if you are going with the second option feel free to authorize your dev hub org and then create a scratch org org accordingly for time being i'm just authorizing my dev org here so i'll go ahead and use this option which is sftx authorize an org so i'll click on that option it would ask me what kind of a dev org that you want to authorize what is that org that you want to authorize so is it the production is it the sandbox or do you want to authorize a org which has the custom url custom login url i'll say i'll go with the production org the reason being i am using a developer edition org which is a production org by default 
So I'll select this option here. Now, if you see here, as, as soon as I click that option, the next option that I see is enter an ORC alias or use the default alias and press enter to confirm. So what it is saying is it is asking me to give a alias name to the ORC that I'm connecting. Now you might be wondering, why do I need this name? So if you have multiple ORCs that are authorized, you need an identifier to understand which ORC that you're working on or which is the ORC that you wanted to launch. So that is where this alias comes into picture. So what I'll say, I'll go ahead with the name demo prod or so I'm just naming it as demo prod for my understanding. Once done, click on enter. Now, as soon as I hit enter, you see option that comes up on your VS code, which says the option that comes up on your VS code, which says running SFDX authorize an org, right? So if you have any browser open by now, you might be seeing this option coming up, right? So you would be seeing a new tab that opens up, which says choose an username here. So you can go ahead and you can go ahead and use the password that you wanted to use here. Feel free to provide the credentials and click on login. Now, by doing so, what would happen is it would authorize the VS code to connect with this org that you are giving the username and password to. So if I click on login, if you are doing this for the first time, you would be presented with an intermediate screen here. You would be presented with an intermediate screen where it might ask you, do you want to allow Salesforce CLI to connect with the Salesforce org? You can click on allow if it is the first time that you're doing. In case if you have already authorized like me, if you have authorized this org with the Salesforce CLI, you would not be seeing that intermediate screen. You would directly log in into that particular org. Now, by logging into this org, what would happen? The page would be redirected to the home page. In the VS code, you would be seeing one more change happening. So if I go back to the VS code, it says SFDX authorized and org successfully ran. It is showing that it is successfully ran. And in case if I wanted to understand, in case if I wanted to understand what is the command that it has run, if I click on show, it would tell me the exact command that it has ran. So if you see here, this is the command that I ran. And this is the alias that I've set. This is the instance to which I have asked the VS code to connect to. Right. So that is what has happened. Now, if you see here, there is an interesting thing that happened. Earlier, it says no default org has been set. Now, if you see here, I have a default org that has been set here, which is the org LWC is what it is written. So if I click on this one, if I click on this option here, it would ask me, do, which is the org that you want to set it as default. So if I'm working regularly with a specific org, let's say in my case, it is the demo prod org. If I want to set that as a default org, then what I can do, I can simply click on that option at the bottom which says org LWC in my case, because this is the default org that I've set earlier. What you can do, if you do not see anything after authorizing your org, you can click on this one. You should be seeing these options like this. I want to set this demo prod that I was using earlier as a default org. If you see here, I have a couple of names that I've given to the same org. That is why I'm seeing a couple of options here, org LWC demo, RSP demo one, demo prod, all these orgs are being authorized with this alias names. So you can give only one, one alias name so that we do not get confused. So in my case, I have done it multiple times. That is why you see these options here. So once I click on that, again, a command would be running, which says running the default org. So once that is done, your default org has been set. If there is only one org that you have, you would be seeing that value here. Since I have multiple alias names that are being given, so that is why it is saying this option here, right? If you do not have them, right? So in order for us to basically go ahead and do this one, what I have done, since I have multiple alias names that are given to the same org, Salesforce is picking up the first option when I do it from the command palette. 
So since I know that the output panel would give me the command that has been used, which is running for org LWC. I want this demo prod to be set here as my default org. So that way we can proceed with this discussion. So what I did, I've copy pasted that command, which also takes us to the next point, which is nothing but whatever that I command that I'm running from this UI interface internally, it is converting into an actual command that it executes in the behind the scenes. So I've copy pasted that code, went into the code terminal and pasted it and changed that name here. So since I know that the alias name that I've given to my org is demo prod, I'm hitting enter here. So once I have done that, it is setting the default username as demo prod and same thing has been reflected here as well. So this is one more thing that you can understand. In case if you want to command that you're initiating from the command palette, what is the actual command that has been used behind the scenes, you can go to the output tab and look for that command that has been executed behind the scenes once you select that option from the command palette. So this is one more, one more way of initiating things in case if you know what is the command that you wanted to use, you can use your terminal to initiate the same command instead of going with your command palette. We would prefer the command palette, the reason being it is easier to use and we do not have to remember the exact syntax of our command. But if you have that uh, memory power in terms of remembering the exact command, feel free to use your terminal to initiate it. Now, if you see here, we are all set in terms of connecting our VS code with our Salesforce or now before I initiate one more command, what I would do, I'll go back to the browser that is open. I'll close that tab that got open earlier. Currently I have three tabs and I'll go back to the VS code and click on this icon which says open or I'll just click on this one. We do not have to do anything. It would automatically open that org once we have authorized it. So if I click on this one, it would run a command saying that open default or in case if you want to see the actual command that runs behind the scenes, this is what it says. SFDX open. It says SFDX open, SFDX colon open default org. So since I've already set up the default org as demo prod, that has been considered here and it is opening that particular org here. Now, if I go back to the, so if I go back to the browser, that is where I see a new tab that gets open on the home tab. Remember I had three tabs and now a fourth tab has been opened and I am able to log in into Salesforce or without having to provide the username and password here. Once you authorize, you can initiate that open or command from your VS code itself. So now what we can say here is our VS code is connected to the Salesforce or that we have. So this is the setup that is needed in case if you want to write your LWC component or in case if you want to work with your SFTX, this is the setup that you can use where you can connect your VS code with your Salesforce or. So that brings us to the end of this section. In the next section, we'll see how do we deploy the changes from our local, which is the VS code folder structure to our Salesforce or, and how do I retrieve the changes from our Salesforce or into our VS code folder structure. Hey guys, if you like this video, do like, share and subscribe to SFTC Quest.